Fishnet Bible Stories proudly presents Abram and Sarai In the city of Haran, in a very nice house, lived a very old man with his very old spouse. Abram and Sarai were their names. They lived with their family and got along with everyone. But they didn't have children and wanted a son. God spoke to Abram, this very old man. God told Abram it was time to leave Haran. You and Sarai must go. You must obey me, and I will take care of your family. God made seven promises to Abram if he would pack his bags and follow directions. Abram, God said, Your family will grow and become a nation. I will bless you beyond your imagination. Your name will be known throughout the land. And you'll do good things for others. You will be so grand. Those who love you, I will bless them too. But those who don't like you won't be able to hurt you. You will bless the whole world. Every person, every nation. You will bless everyone beyond their imagination. So Abram and Sarai packed their bags. They hugged everyone goodbye and left Haran. But Lot, their nephew, who was a strong-willed young man, decided to join them as they left Haran. Abram's Altars Abram, Sarai, and Lot packed their bags and left Haran behind. They saddled their camels, not knowing what they would find. They traveled to Shechem, a very busy city. They visited the shops and met other people. Then Abram trekked through the hills so pretty, he stopped at the tree of Morah, away from the townspeople. God appeared to Abram at Morah by a large oak tree. To your offspring I will give this land, said he. Then Abram quickly built an altar. He worshipped God without falter. Abram, Sarai, and Lot traveled down the countryside. They stopped for a while on the west of Ai. Then they traveled towards Bethel's eastern hills. Abram wanted God's blessing and followed God's will. Abram remembered what God said at Morah by the tree. To your offspring I will give this land. Said he, then Abram quickly built another altar. He worshipped God without falter. Abram built two altars to worship God, one by the tree of Morah and one in Bethel's east hills. Through Canaan, Abram, Sarai, and Lot once more did trod to the desert of Negev, following God's will. Abram goes to Egypt. Abram, Sarai, and Lot followed God's command. Through the Negev desert they traveled around, but there was a great famine in the land. Food was scarce and the plants died in the ground. They left their own land against God's command. To Egypt they were bound, where food could be found. But Egypt had many dangers and Sarai was very pretty. Abram told Sarai to lie and say to the strangers, Say you're my sister, so we will be safe in this dangerous city. The Egyptians took Sarai to Pharaoh's household, but bad things began to happen. Pharaoh's family got sick, both young and old, and Sarai was under suspicion. Pharaoh found out about the lie. Back to Abram he returned Sarai. Pharaoh listened to God and did not hurt them. He told everyone, They are under God's protection. Abram, Sarai, and Lot left Egypt with all their goods. Hagar the slave joined their caravan. They carried with them all that they could and traveled back to their own land. Abram and Lot part ways. The Pharaoh of Egypt threw Abram and Sarai out. With Lot and Hagar they traveled about. Through the Negev desert they did roam, where they settled and made their home. 
God made Abram and Lot very, very wealthy. Abram went back to the altar by Bethel with a sacrifice of thanksgiving. He thanked God for making them rich and keeping them healthy. He thanked God for the animals, tents, and all of the blessings. But there were so many animals to keep safe and sound. Too many for the workers to feed and keep safe. The workers of Lot fought with the workers of Abram. There wasn't enough food and the animals were unsafe. Abram knew his flocks needed space and Lot's flocks needed space too. Abram said to Lot, We are family, and I love you, but we each must go our own way. You pick the land you want to move your flocks to, and I will go the opposite way. Lot chose the land east toward Jordan that had many green pastures. He hugged Abram and took his flocks, so they could be fed well and cared for. Abram remained in Canaan and avoided disaster. There was enough food for all, the fighting had stopped, and there was peace in the camp once more. Abram in Canaan After Lot left to live eastward towards the Jordan Valley, God said to Abram, Look as far across the land as your eyes can see. Look to the north, south, east, and west. With this land, your family will be blessed. I'll give all this land to your offspring forever. If one can count all the dust of the earth, that's how many offspring your descendants will be. They will be almost impossible to measure. Now, Abram, said God, arise and walk throughout the land. Walk the length and the breadth. Check the height and the depth. So Abram walked the length and breadth of the land of Canaan, then moved his tent and settled down, by the oaks of Mamre away from the town. He believed God's promises and built another altar. By the oaks of Mamre he worshipped God and gave him honor. Abram rescues Lot. A confederacy of five kings ruled the land by the Dead Sea. Four other kings made war with the five and tried to conquer their lands. The confederacy of five kings made a stand. They drew a line in the sand. They didn't want the four kings to conquer their land. But the five kings were not very brave. When they saw the four kings, they quickly ran away. Lot, who lived in Sodom by the Dead Sea, was captured by the four kings. They took all his goods and made him their slave. A man escaped and found Lot's uncle, Abram the Hebrew. He told him that the people and Lot and all his goods were captured. Abram made a war plan for Lot's rescue. Abram's men, an army of 318, were gathered. Abram and his army marched to find the prisoners and Lot. He divided his men into groups and they attacked by night. Abram's men found the people and Lot and his goods. Lot and the people were rescued and freed from their plight. Abram and Melchizedek There was a war around the Dead Sea. Abram rescued his nephew Lot and set him free. Abram and his men won that war for the people of Sodom. Then Abram went to the Valley of the Kings. Melchizedek, a king and priest of God Most High, met him there. Melchizedek brought bread and wine to the Valley of Kings. He made a covenant with Abram and the bread and wine was shared. A blessing on Abram, Melchizedek did command. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of the heavens and seas and all the land. And blessed be the Lord God Most High, who has delivered the enemy into your hand. Abram worshipped God, and of his goods he gave Melchizedek a tenth. It was a tithe to the priest of God. Abram gave the Lord ten percent. The king of Sodom offered Abram all of the spoils, but Abram refused. To God he was loyal. 
Abram would not take one cent. His reward came from God, and away he went. Abram Counts the Stars It was nighttime, and Abram was afraid and sad. He had no son, and he was very old. He had no heir to leave the wealth of his household. But God spoke words to Abram to make him glad. Abram, do not be afraid. I am your shield and your treasure. I will always come to your aid. But God, Abram said, I have no son and I am old. I have no heir to leave the wealth of my household. God said to Abram, I will give you a son, your very own heir. You will give him your wealth, and your legacy will be shared. Look at the heavens, with so many stars, too many to number. Even the stars, your heirs will outnumber. Filled with love for God, Abram believed his promise. God was pleased and called Abram righteous. Abram stared at the stars, knowing that God was honest. God's Covenant with Abram God said to Abram, I will give you a son, your very own heir. Your descendants will be many, your legacy will be shared. Sacrifice a cow, goat, ram, dove, and pigeon. Prepare them so I can show you my vision. Abram prepared the animals for the sacrifice. He chased the vultures away to keep the animals clean. Then as night came, Abram fell into a deep sleep. Dreaming, Abram saw his descendants in a terrible scene. God said to Abram, Your descendants will be slaves for four hundred years. In a foreign land they will be considered strangers. They will be whipped and tortured and shed many tears. But I will set them free and rescue them from danger. As Abram lay to sleep, God brought a fire pot and a blazing torch. The fire passed each animal and the meat was scorched. God spoke to Abram while he slept. Your sacrifices I do accept. Your descendants will inherit this land. This is my promise to you, and my promise will be kept true. Sarai and Hagar Sarai was very old and sad. She wanted a son to make her glad. But her servant Hagar was strong and young. If Abram married Hagar, she could give them a son. Abram, said Sarai, I am old and sad. Make Hagar your wife so we can have a son and be glad. So Abram married Hagar and made her his wife. Hagar became pregnant, and Abram was glad a son would be in his life. But Hagar became proud and thought she was the better wife. Sarai became jealous and mad. She fought with Hagar, and there was so much strife. Hagar was scared and ran away. She drank from a spring and cried out to the Lord that day. The angel of the Lord appeared. Hagar, you will have a son. Go back to Sarai and don't be proud. Hagar returned to Sarai. She was no longer proud. She served Sarai and they no longer fought. Baby Ishmael was born and he cried very loud. Sarai and Abram finally had their son, or so they thought. Abraham and Sarah When Abram was 99 years old, God made a visitation. Abram, obey me and be blameless. Your new name will be Abraham, the father of many nations. Sarai, Abraham's wife, was 90 years old when God made this visitation. God changed her name to Sarah for she will become the mother of many nations. But Abraham wanted God to bless Ishmael too. 
Don't worry, Abraham. I will take care of him for you. Ishmael will have twelve sons and become a great nation. Now, let's discuss the reason for this visitation. The time to keep my promise is here. Sarah will give birth to a child this time next year. He is the son of promise, and Isaac will be his name. Through Isaac, I will bless the nations, and the world will never be the same. Three Visitors Abraham pitched his tent under Mamer's great oak trees. He stared into the distance one day. What did he see? Three men walking towards him in the heat of the day. Abraham ran towards the men and bowed at their feet. He invited them to his home so they could rest. Abraham offered them shade to cool off and water to wash their feet. He said, Please stay for dinner and be my house guest. Very, Very well, they responded. We accept, accept your, your request. request. Abraham hurried to Sarah's tent and told her to bake bread. Then he ordered his servant to prepare the meat. The table was laid with milk, meat, and bread. He stood under a tree and watched the men eat. The men asked Abraham, Where is Sarah, your wife so dear? Abraham responded, She is here, inside the tent. The man said, This time next year, Sarah will give birth to your son. My promise will be kept. Sarah heard what the man said as she sat inside the tent. How can Abraham and I have a child in our old age? We are spent. <laughs> she covered her mouth and laughed as she sat inside the tent. The man spoke. Why did Sarah laugh as she sat inside her tent? Why did she think you're both too old? I said exactly what I meant. Let me be clear. This time next year, Sarah will give birth to a son. Isaac, which means laughter, will be his name. Through him the Messiah will come and the world will never be the same. Angels save Lot. The men finished their meal and started to leave. Abraham walked with them part of the way. The two men walked towards Sodom, the city where Lot lived. But the Lord stayed with Abraham because he had something to say. The Lord turned to Abraham and said, I am very disturbed. A great outcry has reached my ears, and I am very concerned. The citizens of Sodom have acted terribly wicked. I will investigate if these crimes have really been committed. Abraham asked, Lord, if you find ten righteous men, would you spare the city? The Lord said, If I find ten righteous men, I will spare the city. And the Lord went on his way to investigate. Abraham decided to keep watch and wait. The two men, who were really angels, reached Sodom, where Lot lived. Lot was sitting at the gate and he saw the angels come in. Lot wanted them to be safe, so he made a request. Spend the night in my home and be my house guests. Lot and the angels were having supper. All of a sudden, wicked men surrounded his home and pounded on the door. Bring your house guests outside! We want to hurt them and make them suffer! The angels struck the men blind and they sprawled all over the floor. Very early next morning, the angels commanded Lot to take his family and leave. Lot argued, so the angels grabbed their hands and took the family outside the city. The angels commanded, Don't stop in the valley and don't look back and grieve. Run to the hills, or you will be swept away with all the debris. Again, Lot argued. Please don't send us to the hills to live in caves. Send us to the little city, and our lives will be saved. The angels said. I won't destroy the little city, but you must hurry and get there quickly. Lot and his family made it to the little city, Zoar, on their own. God rained on Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. Everything was burned. The cities became a dead zone. Lot's wife came to a halt. She looked back at Sodom 
and turned to a pillar of salt. Lot and his daughters fled to the hills to hide. There they mourned and cried. Isaac is born. Last year, God visited Sarah in her tent. He made a promise and explained his intent. I know you are old, Sarah, but let me be clear. Your baby boy will be born this time next year. God kept his promise the following year. God performed a miracle. It was very clear. Sarah's baby boy was born even though she was very old. Abraham became a father at age 100, just as God foretold. Isaac is the name Abraham gave their baby boy. It means laughter, and he brought them so much joy, Sarah said. God has brought me laughter, even though I am very old. Everyone who hears about this miracle will laugh with me, just as God foretold. Hagar and Ishmael Baby Isaac grew strong and began to walk and talk. Abraham was proud and held a great banquet, but Ishmael was jealous of Isaac and began to mock. Sarah became upset and voiced her regret. Abraham, get rid of Hagar and get rid of her son. Ishmael mocks Isaac because he is jealous. He cannot share inheritance with my son. Ishmael is very rebellious. Abraham became upset. He had to send Ishmael and his mother away. But God spoke to Abraham. Don't be distressed. Listen to Sarah, and I will make sure everything is okay. It is through Isaac that my promise must be kept. Ishmael is rebellious, but he is your son. So I will bless Ishmael, and he will become a great nation. But they must leave your camp. Make sure they are gone. Through the Beersheba desert, they made their trek. The desert was very hot, and they ran out of water. Hagar laid Ishmael in the shade because he was dying of thirst. She wept because they couldn't go any farther. If Ishmael died, her heart would just burst. The angel of the Lord asked Hagar, Don't be afraid. What do you need? The Lord heard Ishmael crying and sent help right away. Ishmael will be fine, this I can guarantee. See, there is a well just a little further away. Take the boy by the hand and let him drink all he can. It is his destiny to become a great nation. God was with Ishmael all the days of his life. He lived in the desert and became a famous archer. Hagar went to Egypt and found him a wife. Ishmael thrived since his departure. Treaty at Beersheba Abimelech, the Philistine king, visited Abraham's camp. Abimelech knew that God's blessing was on Abraham's life. He wanted a treaty to keep peace with his camp. He asked Abraham to be kind so there wouldn't be any strife. Abraham agreed to keep the peace with Abimelech and all the people, but he complained to the king about the men who robbed his well. They were deceitful. Abimelech didn't know about the deceit. He asked Abraham to show kindness so they could live in peace. Abraham agreed and gave him cattle and sheep. Seven ewes were taken aside to make an oath that day. They proved that Abraham built the well and no one could ever take it away. Abimelech and Abraham made an oath on this site. The place is called Beersheba, which means Oath of Seven. Satisfied, Abimelech went home hopeful and bright. Where he and the king agreed, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree. The tree is a reminder to heaven about his oath of seven. He lived in Beersheba a long time in prosperity. Abraham sacrifices Isaac. One day, God called out to Abraham. Abraham replied, Yes, God, here I am. God said, 
Take Isaac to Moriah as a sacrifice, this son you love more than your life. Abraham saddled his donkey with freshly chopped wood. He took Isaac on this trip and they traveled for three days. When they reached the mountain, Isaac carried the wood. Abraham carried the knife and the pot that was set ablaze. Isaac turned to Abraham and asked, Father, we have the wood and the knife and the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice that is required? Abraham answered, My son, God will provide the lamb for the sacrifice that is required. At the top of the mountain, Abraham built an altar. He carefully stacked the wood and told Isaac to lay on top. Abraham raised his knife to sacrifice Isaac on the altar, but God shouted from heaven, Abraham, stop! Abraham replied, Yes, God, here I am. God said, Do not hurt Isaac, your beloved son. You truly love me even more than your own son. I am very pleased with what you have done. Abraham looked up and spotted a ram. Its horns were tangled in the thicket. It was caught in a jam. Without falter, Abraham sacrificed the ram on the altar. He called that mountain, the Lord is our provider, because God provided the sacrifice that was required. Once again, God spoke to Abraham from heaven. I will bless you beyond all comprehension. As much as you love your beloved son Isaac, you love me even more. You will have more descendants than the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. All the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Isaac marries Rebekah. At 127 years of age, Sarah closed her eyes and died. Abraham bought a special tomb, buried his beloved wife, and cried. Isaac missed his mother Sarah and was very sad. Abraham knew that Isaac was lonely and wanted to see him glad. He called for Eliezer and ordered a commission. Eliezer will be sent on a special mission. Swear an oath to me, Eliezer, said Abraham. Go to my home country and go to my own clan. Pick a wife for Isaac. God will give you a plan. Eliezer packed ten camels full of riches and presents. He traveled to Abraham's home country as he was commissioned. When he arrived, there were women drawing water from a well. He prayed to God for wisdom concerning this special mission. Dear God, please give me direction. Who should I ask for water? Please be my guide. May she bring me and my camel's water without hesitation. Let that be the woman you have picked for Isaac's bride. Before he finished praying, a young woman came to the well. Eliezer asked the beautiful woman for a drink. She quickly lowered her water jar and gave him plenty to drink. The woman looked at the situation. She said, I will water your camels. They are thirsty and dry. She did her task gladly without hesitation. Eliezer knew God chose Rebekah to be Isaac's bride. Eliezer gave Rebekah a gold nose ring and bracelets to wear. He asked, Please tell me, who is your father? And who is your clan? Bethul is my father, and he lives over there. She took Eliezer to meet her father and introduced him to her clan. Eliezer told Bethuel, Abraham's nephew, about his commission. Rebekah agreed to be Isaac's bride. They rode back to Hebron and fulfilled this special mission. Isaac ran to meet Rebekah, and she became his bride. Death of Abraham Abraham had buried Sarah, his precious wife. He missed her so much and was very sad. 
He married Keturah and made her his new wife. They had many children, and they were so glad. Abraham loved his new family and enjoyed his new life. Abraham didn't want his children to be jealous and compete. He will leave Isaac all his inheritance when he is deceased. He gave wonderful gifts to his other children and sent them east. He sent them away to keep the peace. Abraham died, a very content old man, at 175 years of age. He was gathered to his people at the end of his life. Isaac and Ishmael buried Abraham next to Sarah at the family grave. Isaac received the inheritance, and God blessed him all his life. Thanks for watching. This was a combination of several videos compiling our series on Abraham and Sarah in the book of Genesis. Please give us a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our other Bible story videos. Bye!